may recognize our next guest, the thoughtful Patrick Brewer in the hit series Schitt's Creek. If you've watched the show, you know that he has a silky smooth singing voice as well. And he's currently embarking on a tour with a stop tonight in McKees Rocks. We are so happy to have Noah Reed with us today. Thank you so much for taking time out to be with us. It's great to be here. Thanks for having it me. It really is an honor. So how are you enjoying Pittsburgh so far? Well, we literally just pulled in. I've oh, never good. been to Pittsburgh <laughs> before, but I've always wanted to come. I mean, obviously, like there's the kind of iconic bridge thing that you yeah. go like, OK, I'm here. Um, so it's very cool. I'm, I'm hoping I get a little bit of time to walk around and well, it has to be a lot for you because you're you're moving from city to city, from country to country on this tour. <laughs> what has it been like so far? It's pretty wild. I mean, you know, I've, I've never ha I tried to tour once a few years ago and pandemic kind of, you know, took care of that. And uh, so now this is the first time I've really been able to do this. I've released two records in the in the interim. So it's it's nice to play these songs and it's really wild to have people all over the world, you know, knowing the words and singing along and it's a it's a crazy thing, but one city after another, night to night, you're kind of like, woof, okay, this we're, is, this is we're a going lot. again. All right, nice. Yeah. It's a lot of takeout. Like, do you get a lot of takeout? Yeah, you know, I think the guys <laughs> in the band were pretty. We try to be pretty conscious not to do like fast food all the time. Right. We try to mix it up. <laughs> We've got, good. you know, yeah, it's it's nice. You know, people really fell in love with you on Schitt's Creek. We we got to see, you know, this side of you as playing Patrick. Yeah. Uh, did you have a favorite episode? When you were doing Schitt's Creek at all? I think the baseball episode was written for me. Yeah. Um, because Dan came to a, a birthday party of mine. I used to host this baseball game called the Birthday Baseball Classic, and he came and played, and he was like, okay, I'm going to take this idea and make it a make it a show. I Probably he saw, like, a competitive element in me that day that he was like, oh, we can harvest that. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a fun one to do. Well, but you really got to flex your muscles, too. I mean, we saw these really special moments on the show. And, you know, we, we just saw at the beginning of that clip where you sang simply the best acoustic, yeah. which was amazing. Yeah. But, but was it nice for you to be able to show off your skills as a singer, too? It's beautiful. I mean, I think that, you know, Dan always did a really great job of, of trying to put the actors in the show into into positions that he knew they could really excel at and you know he came to my first uh, album release show oh, when I put out my first record songs from a broken chair and and he was like he was very supportive he said you know just keep doing this whatever you do just keep doing this and then wrote that scene and uh, and now I get to do it in front of a lot of people so it's great so I wanted to ask you uh, in one of your songs statues in the stone hmm. You sing these lyrics, and just because you like to wander, that doesn't mean you don't know the way. Mm -hmm. It's really deep. A lot of your lyrics are like this. What does that mean to you, and, and where were you when you wrote that? What kind of place were you in? I don't know. I think that that song and a lot of songs on my latest record, Adjustments, they're kind of reflective of, of the societal moment that, that we're in. I mean, I, you know, I released that record in the middle of the pandemic and there was a lot of a lot of time to sit and think about stuff um, so and I, I you know music has always been a reflective thing for me but it can't stay within you you kind of have to give it away and and let somebody else interpret it so one of my favorite things at these shows is I know that these songs are being interpreted by all the people that have them in their ears you know and they get to kind of like imbue them with new meaning and new life and that's exciting and it's wonderful and, and you have such a nice fan following too, the showing <laughs> up to your concerts. Yeah, that's pretty wild. We see a lot of the same faces in, in different cities. We see totally new faces and, you know, we, we run the, the gamut of age range and, you know, everything. I mean, it's really, it's incredible. I got really nice fans. That's I wonderful. Say that. yeah. And here's, here's such, something really interesting. I was talking with our producer, Alante, about this. I did not know this, but you have done so much. Your resume is pretty impressive. <laughs> Obviously, we know you from Schitt's Creek. You're a musician too. But I did not know that you were the voice of Franklin. Yeah. You were the voice of Franklin? Come on. I Franklin know. the turtle. I know. A lot of people, find, like, that's, I was nine when I did that. And, like, for a lot of people, they're like, yeah, yeah, Schitt's Creek, Broadway, whatever. This, this one. <laughs> Franklin. <laughs> like, all right. But what, right. what has it been like, you know, growing up kind of in this industry? Is this something that you always wanted to do? And, and having such a breadth of work, too? I think I was a pretty, like, I had a need as a kid to like perform and yeah. um, probably a stronger need than I do now in a weird way. But uh, yeah, it was kind of the only thing I wanted to do. And so it, it's led me down this path of, of trying to figure out also like what that means. I think music for me is an area where I can consider my life in show business and make sense of it in some way and, and you know, kind of 
parse it out from my own brain, you know? Well, and you're going to be at the Roxy Inn tonight. I was just there on Thursday seeing Michelle Wolf, and she, in cool. her stand-up comedy, was cool. talking about how there's no work-life balance. But how do you balance it all, having a family and being on tour and traveling? Yeah, I mean, this is the first time that I've ever uh, really toured, let alone with, with a, a family at home, a, a, young, a young son at home. So uh, it's, it's tricky. I don't know. I'm f I'm, we're figuring it out as we yeah. go. It's not an easy thing to do, for sure. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of every day being like, okay, will we do this again? I don't know. <laughs> we're <kind of laughs> well, seeing I, I, how it goes. I have to think that that's hard because you're fulfilling this one thing that mm. you've worked your whole life for and, and something that you're really passionate about, and yet... Of course, our family is always there in our heart, and so we, it's like pulling at us always while we're still doing the thing we love. Totally. Right? I mean, I, I think what I hope to pass on to, to my son is this idea that, you know, if you, can, if you can create things and share them with people, if they have meaning and value to you, they might have meaning and value to somebody else. And also, it's my job, so I'm kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm out here bringing home something. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's, it is tricky to find the balance. I think show business will kind of take as much of you as it can get, you right. know? Um, so, you know, setting up those healthy boundaries. That's and, right. We have to do yeah. it in everything. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It is a joy to be in your company, so thanks for stopping right by. Well, really thank you appreciate very much it. for having me. And if you would like to see Noah perform tonight, you better get your tickets while they're hot. The concert is happening tonight at the Roxy and Theater in McKee's Rocks. Doors open at 7. We're going to have all the information on our website, kdka.com slash talkpittsburgh.